you may have a network that contains multiple Ethernet devices but no router. Or perhaps you do have a router but you prefer to assign IP addresses manually rather than have the DHCP server assign them automatically. In either case, you'll need to use an Ethernet switcher to connect all of these different Ethernet devices. Muse Research recommends that you use a switcher with a minimum bandwidth of 100 base T, although if you plan to use multiple receptors in a uniwired studio, then a fast gigabit switcher will yield more simultaneous audio and MIDI tracks. 10 base T switchers are too slow for most receptor applications. Using standard Ethernet cables, connect all of the devices to your switcher, including receptor. Make sure to use standard Ethernet cables when connecting devices to your switcher. You don't want to use crossover Ethernet cables. Now if, like a lot of people, you have a box full of cables and aren't sure which are standard and which are crossover, here's a simple way to tell. Hold the two connectors side by side and orient them so they face exactly the same way. Make sure to hold them so you can see the little colored wires inside the connector and tell which pins those wires go to. On a standard Ethernet cable, these colored wires will all be connected to the same pins in both cables. That's why a standard Ethernet cable is also known as a straight through Ethernet cable. On a crossover Ethernet cable, some of these colored wires will be connected to different pins in the two cables. In other words, some of the wires cross over inside of the cable. Now, every device in your network needs to have a unique IP address, so since you're not using a DHCP server to provide those addresses, you'll need to manually assign them to the various devices. Here's how you do this on Receptor. Make sure your switcher is turned on and connect one end of your standard Ethernet cable to Receptor and one end to your switcher. Now, it's essential that you have both ends of this cable connected before proceeding. If you don't, your network won't work properly. Next, press the Setup button on Receptor's front panel and then rotate the top display knob until the TCP IP setup parameter is displayed on the top line. Rotate the bottom display knob until the word Manual is displayed and then push the bottom display knob to apply your selection. Receptor's IP address appears with the first block of numbers underlined. To change the number in the underlined block, rotate the bottom display knob. To move the cursor under the next block, press the bottom display knob. Now using these techniques, you can set the desired IP address. When you push the bottom display knob after setting the last number block, the TCP IP netmask parameter appears. In most cases, the default value of 255, 255, 255, 0 will work, though check with your network administrator if you're connecting to a large corporate network. Again, push the bottom display knob to move between blocks or rotate it to change the value of a block. Once you've entered the desired IP address and net mask, Receptor asks if you're sure. Rotate the bottom display knob to select yes, then press it to apply your answer. Receptor will now put itself into manual TCP IP mode. Double press your Receptor's power button to shut it down. Make sure your switcher is on and then turn on Receptor. Assuming that you've already assigned a different IP address to the computer that's connected to your switcher, then Receptor and your computer will now talk to each other using their manually assigned IP addresses.